praise away for the honor.
been given to the saints of the Most High God. Hallelujah. You may be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. I tell you, God's so wonderful. I have just uh, thoroughly thanked Him and praised Him for the wonderful meetings we had here Sunday. And I tell you, I still am in the midst of that glory of that Sunday morning service. Amen. I tell you what, just a lot of things went on here. Uh, John, I don't know if, if there's no way for time alone to reveal what the Lord did here in our midst. Glory to God. And I thank Him for it. Hallelujah. I was thanking Him for some things today. My God. Just praise Him and my heart got to bubbling over while I was giving Him the praise and giving Him the glory and I felt like dancing in the middle of my office today just just, just thanking Him for what I know He's in the midst of doing. Not going to do, but in the midst of doing right now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. We just want you to remember uh, the service is coming up, prayer meeting tomorrow night, and then right back here Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And we want everybody to uh, uh, please get on there and like and share as much as you can our advertisement for Brother Hiles being here the uh, 20th through the 22nd, uh, Friday and Saturday uh, evening, 7 o'clock p.m. at Sister Betty's in Sunshine Cathedral. And then he'll be here with us both services 11 o'clock and the 6 o'clock service on a Sunday. Amen. And so we're just believing God and anticipating wonderful time in the Lord. And we're expecting to receive something fresh into our spirits. Can you say amen? i tell you what, one uh, right after uh, we had the, uh, a big... Uh, whatever you call it. I said I'm not calling them splits. I call them transitions. And we had one. And I want you to know on that Sunday night, the Lord sent 11 kingdom preachers in here. Amen. I got to come in and get on the platform and the church was full when it really should have been half full. And the Lord was just showing me He was taking care of us. And when I asked for us, I started looking and I knew a couple of the preachers and about four of them, and I thought we was going to have about four there. When I asked them all to stand, we had 12 uh, preachers, praise the Lord. And Brother Lloyd Wilhite was here from Oklahoma. And then a brother that came over with them from Mississippi. And I said, the Lord sure did send folk a long way just to let us know, amen, that He had chosen us for this message, to proclaim this message, amen. Chosen this body to be a house for the word of the kingdom of God. Aren't you glad? Oh, aren't you glad that we're not caught up in all them other systems going on out of Rome? But there's, oh, glory to God. But we're hearing that chosen word for this hour. Praise the Lord. We're hearing that ordained message for this time. But God's got a word for this hour. And He's got a people that are ready to hear that word. Amen. And I believe we're that people and we're walking in the things of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The path of the justice is a bright and shining light, shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Amen. How many believe that perfect day is a day of unveiling? And a day when every bit of the facade is going to come off. And bless God, we ain't going to be able to call for no rocks to hide behind or, or my God, but we're going to be out in the open in that day. Men's going to be crying rocks fall on us. Don't let nobody know we're part of this. Get over here and hide us from this word. But how many know there won't be no hiding from that word of the Lord? It's going to seek out Amen. and uncover. Oh, glory to God. I'm happy in my soul tonight. Hallelujah. Well, we want to receive an offering. We just bless you in the name of the Lord. And we ask you to come and bring those gifts to the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Well, how many know when you walk on into truth, it'll make a separation. Amen. Won't it do it? And how many of you know that truth has got to remain separate yes, from even earthly things? Uh, the Lord was talking to me earlier today concerning. Amen. Send that big old glass of water, a cup of water, a bottle of water. I didn't get one and I, I forgot it. How many know the uh, tabernacle? You couldn't bring the outer court into the inner court. And you couldn't bring the inner court into the Holy of Holies. But it had to remain distinctly in its own era. And you couldn't bring the uh, what went on in the outer court into the inner court. No, sir, the priest couldn't even come in to the inner court unless he washed all that death off of him. The Lord wouldn't let it come in. And you've got to have a part in your spirit that is separated unto truth. And that nothing else out here Amen. can contaminate that part of you. That's, right. That's what Paul meant when he said we know in whom we have believed. Yes. And we're persuaded that he's able to keep that which we committed. He meant there's a part of me that can only believe what God's Word Amen. says. There's a part of me that is not shaken right. by what I see. Paul said none of these things move me. He said, everywhere I go, they're saying you're going to die. And everywhere I go, they're saying the trouble lies wait for you. But he said, none of these things move me. Amen. <coughs> and I'm telling you, God's people have got to get to the place where they're not so soon moved Amen. by circumstantial evidence against the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Well, glory. Hallelujah. First John the second chapter. First John the second chapter. Praise God. I do got the right congregation tonight. Yes. I hope. Praise the Lord. I'm getting to wonder if anybody's out there. <laughs> Hallelujah. First John chapter two. And I want to start reading. I believe it's verse eighteen. Praise the Lord. Verse 18, and we'll read right down to verse 27. Verse 18 through 27. Hallelujah. We're just going to take a little while here tonight and work the Word. Amen. Go down through these verses and see what all the Spirit would say to us tonight out of it. Hallelujah. Everybody found it, say amen. 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 Verse John 2 and 18. Said, little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come even now. Now get that straight in your spirit tonight. I know what the old books and the preachers have taught, but listen to the Word of God tonight. The Antichrist is not one man that's coming Amen. on the end of time. Amen. But 1,900 years ago, John said, even now. Yes. And he didn't say just one, did he? Right. Come on now. He said, even now there are what? Many yes. antichrists. Now, if you brought up like I was, you was brought up to believe that somewhere along the end of time, some Middle Eastern man was going to come up with a black suit and a towel on, and he'd be the Antichrist. But how many of you know you can't got to take the Word? You can't take what one man says. you got to take the Word of God tonight. And the Word of God said even now, as 18, 1900 years ago, John said even now, there are many, many Antichrists. Come on now. That's come whereby we know it's the last time. Now look here. He said it was the last time when he was preaching. Meaning that the Lord was putting an end to some things. That's what he meant. He didn't mean annihilation of the earth, explosion of atomic bombs, detrimental whatever. He said it's the last time way back under. He said it's the last time. Amen. And he said many antichrists. That just word antichrist means anything instead of Christ. Amen. Anything.
anything other than Christ. Right. And we, we study a little more in that same epistle and we'll find out that Antichrist is not even a person. Right. It's a spirit. And he said, every man, every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ not has come, not, not is coming, but is come, amen. is here right now in this place. Yes. Amen. You understand amen. that? See, some will say he has come, and some will say he is coming, and some will even say he's here right now in just some form. But they won't confess that that same Jesus that walked the shore of Galilee right. is the one walking on the inside of you right now. That's the truth. Amen. Somebody say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. They believe we're a type of the body or some form of the body, but they don't believe we're the actual body right. of Christ. Amen. Well, I've come to tell you tonight, He ain't got no but one body. Praise God. Come on. And He that, he, he that by one spirit are we all baptized into one body? Can you say amen? amen? And I preach to you Sunday morning that the heaven is a throne and the earth is a footstool. Amen. But in between that foot and that head, there's a body that joins it all together. He come out shunned out. Oh, I want you to know he's working through and in and by that body in this earth today. It's through that body that revival will come. It's through that body that deliverance is brought. It's through that body that healing take place. It's through that body that prosperity will flow. It's through that body that revelation is going to be spoken for. That's the fact that you got either that or you got division. And Paul said there ain't going to be no division in the body. But every member fitly framed together and every joint has a what? Supply. Hallelujah. So you got a head, you got a foot, but you got something in between all that. Joining it together. That means what the head thinks, the feet will walk out in this earth. Amen. And so if you can't confess that that's who you are tonight, right. then he said you're of the spirit of Antichrist. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? These folks get all stirred up by the mark of the beast. Amen. amen. If they're at the dollar store, the ticket's $6.66, they'll throw a pack of chewing gum on there to make it a little more. And they won't take it. They, they, they worry about computer chips and all that. I got news for you. That can't none of that be. Because the Bible said to have the mark is to have the nature. Yeah. You can't take on the nature of ink. Right. Yeah. Ink ain't got no nature. Plastic chips and metal ain't got no nature. Come on now. Yes, There's only one thing can have a nature and that's a man. Right. And his name is a number and his number is man. Six. Three times. Amen. Come on now. Praise Therefore God. I will submit to you. Praise, the Praise God. The Bible says he calls it all both great and small to either did take the mark one or two places. In his forehead, that's his thinking, or in his right hand, that's his doing, his action, his work. And listen, he said, and it shall come in, he, in Revelation, he said, and none shall be able to buy nor sell except to have the mark. And let me tell you something, some of that mark is just denominationalism and hallelujah. I just couldn't have went all night cutting on that, gotten on this. And furthermore, it, if you won't uh, take their mark, that is, if you won't believe like they believe, they won't let you buy nor sell the gospel in their pulpit. They won't let you preach in their pulpit because you don't believe it the way they believe it. Amen. And that's come to pass already. I don't mind to tell you. Yes, amen. amen. Now listen to the rest of it. Verse 19. They that went out from us was not of us. Right. Amen. amen. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Amen. Amen. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. Right. Come on, somebody. That's I want you to know I've held to that verse dearly. At times. And somebody said, well, what if, if what if they really are others? Then they ain't really gone, are they? They'll be back, won't they? Come on, somebody. But how many know we don't want back? 
what ain't of us. We only want back what's going to build the kingdom. Yes, amen. If it's going to tear it down, we don't need it. Amen. Come on now. Amen. So we let the Lord sweep the house. Yes, amen. Once in a while, he comes through here with a broom and sweeps out the refuge of lives. And we just let him clean. Amen. Now verse 20. But you have an unction from the Holy One. And this is what I wanted. And you know all things. I want to say that again. You have an unction from the Holy One. And let's all say that line together. And you know all things. I want to preach on that a little while. You know all things. And I can hear somebody now saying, I don't feel like I know all things. I don't have nothing to do with this here may not know all things. But, but there's a compartment down here. This is the third dimension. It's the Holy of Holies. It's a, whoo, it's a place where God dwells. Amen. Mm, hallelujah. And so the Bible said, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth. He said, I ain't talking to you about something you don't know. But I'm talking to you about something you know. And I want you to know, bless God tonight, when I'm preaching truth to you, I'm not preaching something you don't know. Somewhere in there, there's a part of you Amen. that knows it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Romans 8 said, we've not received the spirit of bondage again under fear. Amen. But we receive the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, our Father. Amen. And our spirit bears witness with this, the, the spirit bears witness with our spirit Amen. that we are the children of God and the children heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you need to be preached to until something in you rises up and gets in agreement Amen. with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the reason it is said faith can't come no other way but by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can fast and pray, but don't do it for faith because that ain't how faith comes. Faith comes by you hearing the truth of the word of God and something coming alive on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piss of the dividing of sunder a soul and spirit joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. My God. Phew. He said, I'm not written unto you because you don't know what I wrote unto you because you know it. And you also know that no lies of the truth. Come on now. Who is a liar but he that deny that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same has denied the Father. Amen. Glory to God. But he that acknowledgeth the Son, well, glory, yes, glory hath the Father also. Yes. You can't have the Son without having the Father. Come on now. Amen. And you can't be in the Father without being in the Son. Amen. 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 And then he said, let that therefore abide in you. Which you've heard from the beginning. If that which you, and I want you to know the beginning ain't just talking about when you went down to the altar and got saved. But it's talking about that John 1 beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. There's things in your spirit tonight that you've never heard from a preacher, and never heard in a meeting. Amen. Never read in a book, but it was deposited there way back from the beginning when you lay in the womb of the Spirit in eternity, glory to God, and heard your your Father discuss His plans and purposes for the ages, glory to God. Praise God, praise God. That which you've heard from the beginning, He said, hold it, abide in it. And that which you heard from the beginning shall remain in you. And ye shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. And glory to God. And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. Yes. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you or them that try to talk you out of your revelation. Yes, amen. Amen, amen. I want you to hear me well. 
somewhere along the line, you're going to have to get a little vocal for what you believe. Amen. And when you do, people's going to try to seduce. Yes, yes, they will. Does not the Bible say giving heed to seducing spirits? Yes, what does that mean? That means people's trying to talk you out of what you believe. Uh, amen. They say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. Right, God, how many know what you believe tonight? Amen. Amen. How many is on a secure, solid ground? Yes, right. How many couldn't be seduced if seven amen. dignitaries from the high church showed up amen. at your doorstep? Amen. Well, glory to Hallelujah. God. One time my wife and I was two kids was little, and she'd get one in the car strapped in, I'd get the other in the car, and we was going somewhere to eat. And the Mormons come up. Bless God. And when they come up, they refuse to shut up. <laughs> And I just wouldn't hush either. Amen. Amen. And finally, after an hour, that one said, Would it be all right if we come back and brought somebody else? Mm -hmm. I said, Yeah, any time. Come on. <laughs> and I talked to somebody later, said, Well, that's what they do when you talk them into a corner and they don't know what else to say. They go get one that's schooled a little deeper yes, in Mormonism. Because they couldn't talk me out of what I had. I couldn't be seduced. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. the Lord. I'll tell you, bless God, we got to get in a place where even circumstances. Yes, amen. That's the truth. Amen. Can't talk us out of what we believe. We got to get in, I don't know what happened either. It just went off in the middle. Amen. We got to get in the, to the point we're so convinced nothing can remove right. it from our heart. Hallelujah. The Bible said, let no man take thy crown yes. from thee. What is your crown? It's the glory of which he's begotten you and caused you to see this revelation. Amen. It's the truth that's in you that's turned you around and established you in the doctrine of this age. Hallelujah. Amen. Not some age past. You can't get up in this hour and preach in this 21st century or whatever it is, this 21st. You can't preach 18th century doctrine. Oh, That's the truth. You can't preach second day truths right. and try to walk in third day mentality. Amen. You got to talk in whatever realm you're in. Yes. Amen. Can you say praise the, praise the Lord? We got folks everywhere that just parroting the same old sermons. My God, let no man seduce you tonight. Hallelujah. He said, Amen. Give me just a hair more on this one. He said, Let no man, uh, are these things that I written unto you concerning them that seduce you? Now, verse 27, I wanted that one. That'd be the end of the reading for this portion. But the anointing you receive abideth in you. Amen. Amen. And you have, you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things. Amen. And is truth, and is no lie, Amen. and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide yes, in him. Oh, what a most shut out of the Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. That same anointing. That was Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's the Christ. Amen. He's the anointed one. Yeah. Amen. Now I want to read that verse 26 and 27 in the message Bible said I've written to warn you about those who are trying to deceive you. But they're no match for what is embedded deeply within you. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! Christ anointing. No less. You don't need any of their so-called teaching. Christ anointing teaches you the truth on everything you need to know about yourself and Him. Uncontaminated by one single lie. Amen. Live deeply in what you were taught. Hallelujah. Live deeply in what you were taught. What taught now by the Holy Ghost. That which the Spirit hath taught to your heart. Now Deuteronomy 29 and 29 says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed 
belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of the law. Hallelujah. Oh my. Now, one must not bring spiritual things into an earthly realm. That is for learning purposes. You don't need to make God earthly so you can learn. You don't need Him to come down and teach. You need to go up here. You need to come up here. Amen. You understand that? I said you need to go come up here. Isaiah 55 said, As the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts and my ways above your way. He wasn't telling you to stay ignorant. He was telling you to come on up in that higher realm. And another thing I want to say tonight is you, we must not reach for spiritual knowledge as being something that we don't already possess. And I want to clarify that. Hallelujah. With the Scriptures. Because this is to me is a big problem. People are asking for things in the sense of lust. That is with the feeling that they don't have it or they're incomplete. And whenever you reach for knowledge in that realm, you die. Because that's exactly what they did in the garden. Yep. They doubted what they had and reached for more yes. from another round. Yes. Hallelujah. Once they were convinced they didn't have it, they went after it in a spirit of lust. Now most people are all messed up with the word lust. The only thing they think of when you say lust is some sexual sin. But I got news for you. Lust is when you have a sense of lack about you. When you feel inadequate. Yeah. Yeah. When you feel incomplete. Yeah. My beloved brother and sister, Colossians 2 said, I'm complete in Him. Yes. Yes. Who is the head of all principalities and power yes. and that in Him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I'm not here tonight to get fixed. Glory to God. I'm not broke. Amen. I'm complete in Him. Yes. I have an unction. And that unction in this hour is being loosed within my spirit to teach me things that are already there. Yes, amen. To reveal things to my heart that are already there. Can you say amen? amen. Now, now uh, James 1 said, If any man like wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth liberally to all men and upbraideth not, but let him ask in faith nothing wavereth. For he that waveth is like the wave that is driven and tossed on the sea. Let not this man think that he should receive anything from the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A few chapters over, he said it this way. You have not because you ask not. Because when you do ask, you ask it amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. He says, when you are asking me, you're asking me because you feel like you don't have it. You feel a sense of need and want. Yeah. Come on now. And you're approaching me in unbelief. You're approaching me in fear. Come on. Yeah. They reached for it because they lusted after it. They felt they had, there was something they didn't have. And you say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And anytime you're going after anything from God, you've got to be convinced you got it before you go after it. Amen. Hello. Two verses I'll refer you to. Both of them are in the book of 1 Peter. One says that He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. The other one says He's given us exceeding great and precious promises where He's made us a partaker of the divine nature. Amen. Ephesians 1 and 3 says He's blessed us with all Come on now. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The enemy came to Jesus in the wilderness in the 40 days of testing and said, If you bow before me, all these things will I give unto thee. He couldn't give him nothing. Because right. he already had it all. Amen. That's right. Amen. And that's how you defeat lack. And that's how you defeat sickness. And that's yes. how you defeat disease. Yes. The minute you give in to the sickness and think that something is wrong in your body, well, hallelujah. Don't shout me down, Lord. Then you automatically start walking the road of the path of the knowledge of good and evil, trying to get what you ain't got. My God, I wish 500 people heard that tonight. Trying to get what you ain't got. When 
he said he freely given us all things. Can you say amen? amen. Now if you're going to walk in kingdom truth, there are several little phrases in the Bible that are especially coined from the Pauline epistles that you're going to have to get embedded in your spirit. One of those statements is in Him. In Him. That means the full redemptive work and everything about it is mine tonight. Hallelujah. The other one is all things. Yes. And the other one is from above. Yes. Hallelujah. You need to take those three phrases and do you about a six-week Bible study. You'll come in here with such grace on your life. You'll come in here so convinced of who you are. Come on now. Lose that sense of lack. Lose that sense of fear. Lose that the, the thought that something can actually kill you or take you. Come on now. Oh, glory to God. And then David said in Psalm 77 verse 6 that he communed with his own spirit. Oh, hallelujah. That's how you tap into things that you already know that your head ain't figured out yet. You start communing with your own spirit. You got to unplug your brain, your, your, your mouth from your brain and start speaking out of your heart. Yes. Well, glory. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to tell you something now about this natural man trying to figure this stuff out. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Amen. Now, I don't have to tell you that a lot of times in the Bible, the word heart is the same word translated as mind. It says the mind Amen. is desperately wicked. Come on now. And no man can know it. Who can know it? And then it follows up in Jeremiah uh, 10, 23 says, now this is good, listen to it. Oh Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Let my God, I want to say that again, it's not in man the way to walk and the way to the direct his steps. Hallelujah. Listen, folks, you got to let the Lord Jesus come up here in this temple and start turning over tables. Yes. Yes. He owns the house. Yes. You don't know it, but you watch. Yes. When he gets through throwing all that mess out, you know what he's going to say? My house. Yes. Well, glory. I mean, isn't that just like God come in without asking anybody's permission? Start turning the doves loose. Start turning the money tables over. Start running everybody out. And then when he gets through, let everybody know it's his house. Yeah. Come on. And he said, you've made it a den of thieves. Come on, what's the thief? Somebody that ain't never got enough. Somebody don't never feel complete. Somebody's trying to get, 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 get all the time and don't care how, what method he uses to get it. Right. Who is a thief? Well, Jesus said in John 10, all that ever came before me was thieves and robbers. Right. Some folks think the thief of John 10, 10 is the devil. But if you read that whole chapter, the Lord didn't say nothing about the devil. He talked about the ministry of that hour. Come on. you got to have the Lord come in your house and start turning over some mess. Glory to God. And then 1 Chronicles 28 verse 9, listen to this verse, it's beautiful. And thou, Solomon, my son, know that the God of thy father and serve Him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind, for the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts, and if thou seek him, he will be found of thee. Uh, oh God. Job said, Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. I go backward, and I can't perceive. One on the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, and I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Glory be to God. My foot hath held his steps. He said, there's something in me that knows God, and God knows it, and I don't care what it looks like on this outside. I'm convinced that the Lord knows there's a way in me that's right, and I'm going to take that way. Hallelujah. 
He said, My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of my lips. And I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. And he is in one mind who can turn him. And what his soul desireth, even that he doeth. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me. Glory to God. Woo, I wish I had a Methodist amen right there. I said he uh, he appointed the thing, the performance the thing that is appointed for me. And many such things are with him. God Almighty. There's no firmness, no shadow of turning in him tonight. That's right. Amen. All that empty wishy stuff's in me, it ain't in him. And it ain't, and when I say that it's in him, I'm not talking about him way off yonder above the heavens somewhere. For it's in him I live and move and have my being tonight. I'm talking about there's a man on the inside of me tonight that in spite of what it looks like I may be worried over, he's settled, he's easy, he knows the way. He knows the way. Amen. He's in one mind and you can't turn. Thank God. Thank God there's something that's true. Amen. Let Amen. God be true. Amen. And every man a liar. Amen. Oh, with all the doctor reports you have to listen to yes. and all the family problems you have to try to deal with and all the trouble in your own rotten mind lying to you day and night, don't you know there's something in you that's of one mind and you can't turn him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, and what his soul desire, even that he doeth. Hallelujah. Job 11, 5 and 6, But oh, that God would speak and open His lips against thee, and that He would show thee the secrets of wisdom. <laughs> For they are double to that which is. Boy, I about come unglued when I read that today. I tell you, they're double to what I think. It's even better than what I'm anticipating. It's even bigger than what I've drawn out. Yeah. Somebody say praise the, praise the Lord. It's double, it's double, it's double. John 16 verse 12, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. But when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth, for He shall not speak of Himself, but what He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. Glory to God. He shall glorify me, for He shall receive of mine and show it unto you. All things that the Father hath, there's one of them all things again. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore I said He'll take of mine and show it unto you. A little while and ye shall not see me. And again a little while and ye shall see me. Amen. Because I go to the Father. Then said some, of his disciples among themselves. What is this that he saith a little while, and ye shall not see me? And again a little while, and ye shall see me. Now I want to put my finger there long enough to look up and tell you in John 14, Jesus said this, Where I go ye know, and the way ye know. Amen. Come on. And they said, We know not where thou goest, neither know we the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Philip said, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. Yeah. We'll just be happy if you'll open up some, <coughs> excuse me, some way and show us the Father. And Jesus said, have I been with you so long and you know me not? Oh, glory to God. If you've seen me, you have seen my Father. Amen. Believest thou that I am in the Father, and the Father is right. in me, or else believe me for the work's sake. And verily I say unto you, the works that I do shall ye do also, and greater works than these shall ye do. Because I go unto my Father, that in that day if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Something in me knows that. Something in me knows how to work tonight. That's the reason it comes up when I'm preaching to you because I've got something in me that's persuaded that it'll work. Hallelujah. It's the truth of God coming up. Amen. 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 You understand, it's going to take something more than just these little ditty sermons. And it'll 
orchestrated parts to bring God's people into an hour when the Son of Man can be revealed. Hallelujah. That, that, that end time event they're all waiting on is not what they think. It's the coming for of the Son of Man. The revealing of the sons of God in this hour. Oh my God, the whole earth is on tiptoes right now. Oh wait now. They couldn't say, what does he mean a little while? You shall not see me. And then yet a little while. And you shall see me. Amen. And Jesus knew they were desirous to ask him. And said unto them, do ye inquire among yourselves what I said? That a little while and you shall not see me. And again a little while and you shall. Verily mm, he said, verily I say unto you, you will weep and lament. But the world will rejoice. And you'll be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. Amen. Amen. Come on now. A woman went in travail, have sorrow, because her hour's come, but as soon as she's delivered the child, she remembered no more the anguish for joy. Listen to it now. That a man is born into this world. He said, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I'll see you again. I'll see you again. He didn't mean way on over here in our time. He meant it just a few days. Three days later, I'm coming up. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah, shakalah, mahaya. And 50 days after, I'm coming back for good and get on the inside of you. You're going to see me. You're going to see me glorified. You're going to see me resurrected. You're going to see me work miracles again. Only it won't be down there by Galilee. It'll be with you. Say, say, and go, have I none but such as I have? Right. Give I unto thee. Amen. Hallelujah. Ye you know all things. Amen. I feel like John tonight, folks. I'm not preaching something to you, you don't already know. Right. Right. You know these things. And he said, Well, glory. I don't mean to read so much from one passage, but it was too good to leave anything out. He said, Now, therefore, you have sorrow, but I'll see you again. Yes. And your heart shall rejoice. Yes. And I like this. And no man shall take your joy from you. That was the same as him saying, no man will take me from you again. But they do do it every Sunday. They put him away off of yonder and stand right here in the midst of his church. Can you say praise the Lord? Oh my God. And then he said in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Who was the me was referring to there? That flesh man that was standing there. You shall ask me nothing. But very now say, what shall ever you ask the Father? That's the Spirit. That's, right. That's, right. That's the Spirit he was going back to in my name. Come on now. He'll give it to you. Hitherto or up to now you've asked nothing in my name. But ask and you shall receive Amen. that your joy may be full. Amen. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. Everybody say Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Hallelujah. I'm telling you we're in an hour when the real Jesus is fixing to stand up and he ain't going to be in Galilee. And Jesus said if they say he's over yonder, don't believe him. And if they say he's over there, don't believe him. Because as the lightning, that means the revelation as it coming forth from the east and shining all the way to the west. So shall be the day of the coming of the Son of Man. Hallelujah. I mean, though you're a part of that revealing of the Son of Man in this hour, he's going to get up inside of you and begin to demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he said, I, for the Father himself loveth you because you've loved me. Amen. And believe that I came out from God. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. And he said, and again, I'll leave the world and go unto my Father. <coughs> That's all the fulfillment of John 17. Glorify me with that glory that I had with thee before the world was. And his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plain. Something happened. The revelation called. 
said it, thou speakest no proverb. Now we are sure that thou knowest all things and needest not, oh hallelujah, that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus said, do you now believe the hour cometh and is now come that you shall be scattered? Come on now. And they were for the revelation. <laughs> Uh, scattered every man to his own and shall leave me alone and yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. My God. Hallelujah. And he said these things have I spoken unto you that you might have peace in the world. You shall have tribulation but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen. Oh praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Just a couple of more and I'm through Colossians 2. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts may be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding my God, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. Now what do 2 Corinthians 4 say? But ye have this treasure. Come on now. In earthen vessels. Everybody shout, I know all things. Oh, somebody said that's bragging. It ain't done. It is confessing what's so. Amen. John 14, 26. The Comforter which is the Holy Ghost. My God whom I send in my name. Yes. He will teach you all things. Amen. And he'll bring all things to your yes. Yes. remembrance. Yes. Oh my God. Proverbs 2. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments <laughs> with thee. Oh, I don't know if you're blessed tonight or not, but I preach myself happy. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lift up thy voice for understanding, and if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as a hid treasure. Glory yeah. be to God. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Thou shalt... Then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. You're going to find it right here. That's where you're going to find it, folks. Are you listening to me? you got to believe. Now, this is truth. Listen to it. you got to believe that every book you read, right down to this one, amen, is not meant for you to pull something out of that and put it in here, you ain't God. It's meant for that to awaken something. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's already there. Yeah. It's tools yeah. that's used by the Holy Ghost to stir up. Yeah. What did Paul say? He said, I stir up your pure remembrance. Is that what he said? And he said, I stir up your pure minds in another place. And then in Ephesians 4, he said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In 1 Corinthians 2, you you have the mind of Christ in Philippians 2. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Seek her as silver, search for his hid treasure. For the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. Somebody say, laid up. Laid up. Yeah. Glory to God. Past tense. Already done. Right. Oh my God, he's a buckler for them that walk uprightly. He keeps the paths of judgment, preserves the way of his saints. Come on now. Yeah. If you do these things, he said, then you shall understand righteousness, judgment, equity, yea, every good path when wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant to thy soul. Yeah. Discretion shall preserve thee understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee from the way of the evil man. Who knows who the evil man is? That is this corruptible man, this mm -hmm. 
this carnal man. Amen. He'll deliver thee from that man that speaketh forward things. Proverbs 25, 2 said, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's in the heart of a king to search it out. Glory to God. My Lord, it's time for you to start searching the right cavern. Yes. You're hunting gold in the wrong hill, folks. The yes. silver and the gold is mine, saith the Lord. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. And right here is where that's at. Amen. Proverbs 20, 27. You know this verse. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. And he searches the inward parts of the belly. Can you say amen? And that's the very reason, hey, I made it to the end. I didn't think I'd ever make it tonight. But that's the reason Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 that my preaching, my speech was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and the power. Come on. That your face should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And then he said, when we're among them that are perfect, we change our way of preaching. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God don't want me having to come in here and mash up baby food. Not when I'm preaching to you because you're mature enough that you ought to be able to receive the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Woo, Paul said, when I get among them that are perfect, another anointing comes on me. I begin to tremble. Oh, hallelujah. He said, when I got up before you, I started to tremble. He didn't mean because he was scared. He meant because the anointing came on me. Hey, glory to God to preach that living word. And he said, we speak the wisdom among them that are perfect, even the hidden wisdom, which uh, and not the wisdom of this world which cometh to naught. For had the prince of this world knew they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Amen. Amen. But as it is written, I have not seen, it has not heard, nor is it entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him, but God has revealed them unto us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Amen. Now listen to the verse in Amplified. Yet when we're among the full-grown, spiritually mature Christians who are ripe in understanding, we do impart a higher wisdom. Everybody say a higher wisdom. The knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden, but is indeed not a wisdom of this present age or of this world or of the leaders or rulers of this age who are being brought to nothing. But we are setting forth a wisdom of God once hidden from human understanding, but is now revealed to us by God that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glorification to live us into the glory of His presence. Amen. Folks, there's a knowledge that if the man of God or woman of God together with the Holy Ghost anointing can touch in you, it will lift you out of the natural and put you over into the spiritual. Amen. <laughs> glory. Amen. Listen, one more in that. But on the contrary, the Scripture said, what the eyes not seen, the ears not heard, and it's not entered the heart of man all that God has prepared and keeps ready and is made for those who love Him. Yet to us God has unveiled and revealed them by and through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God, the divine counsels and things that are hidden even beyond man's scrutiny. Hallelujah! Woo, that means exceeding and abundantly and above what we ask or think. Amen. Amen. Well, glory. Ephesians 1 says to be filled with the spirit of wisdom mm -hmm. and a revelation in the knowledge of Him. Yeah. And Ephesians 3 says to be able to comprehend yeah. with all saints. Yes, what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height? Yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. The Holy Ghost said through John, you got an unction. you got a, The Word is, I may have to teach more into that, to, to get it fully understood. But the word is uh, charisma. 
which is the same Greek word used for the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The gifts in the word gifts in the Greek language is charism, or which is from charisma, which is a free release gift that flows by the will and graces of God. Whoa. And it works by faith yes. in the anointing that is on your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so he said, you have an unction. You have an anointing. Yeah. You have a charisma. Yeah. You have a gifting. Yeah. And what does that mean? It means you know all things. Three of the gifts are revelation gifts. Amen? Yeah. They think like God. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. There's only your spirits. Three of the gifts are power gifts. It means you act like God. You do what He did. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Faith, healing, and miracles. Yes. And then three of the gifts mean you talk like God. Yes. Tongues, interpretation, and tongues, and prophecy. Amen. And all of them are giftings of the same Holy Ghost. Yes. And if you got that one Holy Ghost, you got all unction in you tonight. Now, God, that's the reason Jesus said, don't worry about what to say. In the hour you need it. Yeah. It'll be given. Yeah. And yet with him saying that, how often have even I, as a minister, approached the throne and asked him to give me a message when I already got a message on the inside of me. Yeah. I think it's getting to the point we're going to have a hard time even finding a title. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. We're going to have a hard time finding point number one. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have a hard time finding the A's, B's, and C's yeah. of our outline because the Holy Ghost, we no longer going to be preaching by an outline, folks. We're going to be preaching by supernatural truth. Praise the Lord. The Lord prophesied, excuse me, in here on Christmas Day, was it, or New Year's, New Year's, and, and, and the word of the Lord was, that they're about angelic ministry in this, this coming up year. Angel, well, you know why the angels were running up and down on that ladder. They're bringing revelation from the other world. And you know, uh, a couple of years back, the Lord showed us in a vision here in a prayer meeting that while we were even up speaking, that the angel of God was going to come put another word in our mouth and we were going to start preaching. And I'm going to tell you, some of these fellas is going to preach it if God has to take hold of their tongue. Yeah. Amen. If he has to totally re remove what they were going to say out of their mind. Right. And you say amen. amen. And it's going to be by the washing of the water right. of the word. Amen. He'll sanctify people without spot and without blemish. And present it unto himself a glorious church. church. Can you say amen? amen? So we're not dealing with a bunch of stuff that's just hit and miss. Might work, might not work. No, you know. You know. John said, I'm not telling you nothing. You don't know something in you tonight knows that this thing will work. Hallelujah. You may have seen, seem like you failed in it a thousand times, but there's still something inside of you that makes you get back up and go at it again because it knows something. It knows all things. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus, seal up this word in the hearts and minds of your people tonight. God, I sanctify every thought in this house. Uh, and I command that every mind, uh, hallelujah, remain in this realm of truth. Uh, oh, Lord, we will not believe a lie and be damned. Uh, we will not be seduced uh, by man's teaching. Uh, but we will leave ourselves open uh, to the revelation and the doctrine of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and we thank you that we're of people in this hour who have an open spirit and an open mind to the truth of God. Lord, we're not satisfied where we're at. We want to grow beyond every boundary and every border. We want to expand in revelation and we want to grow in doctrine. And we ask, Lord, tonight that this knowledge of God becomes so great in us like a fire let it burn in our spirit tonight, God. Consume us ever consuming and all consuming fire. Burn us up and consume our very thoughts, our wills and our ways until we are in your image and likeness and until we can fully let this
this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let these hands, Lord, heal the sick. Let these hands, Lord, raise the dead. And let us be one in the spirit. And let us be one in the faith, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. And amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7.30. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs>